Welcome to the Writer Showcase Podcast. I'm Phil Nasons, and I'm the host of this weekly podcast brought to you by the authors who appear and also by you, the listening public. You won't hear any commercials or advertisements because this podcast is funded by the writers who appear and by you, the listening audience. If you would like to be a guest on the show or would like to support the work being done here, please contact me at www.thewritershow.wordpress.com and I'll be in touch real soon and have you on just as quickly as we can. The Civil War is one period of time that I'm a big fan of. I should say I'm a big history fan of it. I'm not a fan of everything that occurred during that period, as most people aren't. My next guest has written a historical fiction novel set in a Civil War backdrop. And it's a fascinating read. It's called Journey to Freedom. Please welcome author Katrina Metter to the Writer's Showcase podcast. Katrina, how are you doing? Welcome to the show. I'm good, Bill, and thank you for having me. Oh, it's my pleasure. It's my pleasure. Glad to have you here. You've been on a couple of other programs thus far because, you know, after I picked up the uh, show again and started doing it, you jumped right in there and said, hey, I got some stuff here. I want to get in there. We'll get you started again, and we're very appreciative of that, by the way, over here. But well, for I'm those, excited. I, I, I can tell, and I'm really excited to have you because this is going to be another one of those fun, fun shows where we get to talk a little history and talk about things that perhaps aren't always the easiest things to hear and to listen to, and for a lot of probably good reason. But anyway, before we get into all that, for those who haven't ever heard of you or don't know who you are, can you tell us just a little bit about yourself? Sure. Um, I grew up on a 70-acre farm outside of a small town called Frost Plain, located in the heart of Texas. This is actually the hometown for Robert E. Howard, who is the author of the Conan the Barbarian book. I find it very interesting that I get to share the same hometown that a famous author does, and soon there's going to be two famous authors from that town. Yeah, you'll be the second. Yes, I'm looking forward to that. We hope so. We hope this book, and this book has been around a while, right? It has. Um, I published it in 2010, so it's going on its fourth year. Wow, time flies. <laughs> it sure does. I, I'll tell you, I can attest to that. But you've done a couple re-edits, and uh, you've repackaged it a bit, different cover, different things like that, right? I have done some re-editing, and I'm about to release my second edition of the paperback version. But the cover is going to be the same. But at least you have another edition to release, so the book did sell some books, right? It did. It has done very well, in my opinion. Um, I do a lot of book signings, and I have a lot of uh, positive feedback from the book signings that I do. And it's also available on Amazon and uh, through paperback or Kindle. Yeah, that's right, and we'll be able to leave you a link to the Amazon site where you can purchase Journey to Freedom. And we hope that you do now. There's also a companion that goes along with it. You can either buy it with the book, it comes with the book, or as a side. And that's just called and that's just basically a timeline called uh what and that book would be again? Um Their Journey Begin is a short anthology um written by the request of some readers of Journey to Freedom. And they, what they wanted to know specifically in this book was what was going on in the lives of the main characters in Journey to Freedom, which is Marissa and Gregory and Daniel and Robert, prior to them meeting as adults in Journey to Freedom. So their journey begins was actually written after Journey to Freedom, but it goes with the book. Now that's pretty good, I'll tell you. Uh, so grab them both, and it'll help you figure out some things that maybe the journey or journey to freedom didn't cover exactly. It's it's a good thing. Anyhow, if you know you've written this is your you've written five books now. If if you had to give advice to uh, up and coming writers or people who 
have been writing for a long time and have those manuscripts somewhere in their closet or whatever, what advice do you have for them? My advice would be to get yourself a courtesy group. I think that there is nothing more valuable than someone who will is is comfortable enough to tell you their honest opinion. Not somebody who just says, oh, it's good, you're doing great, but, but tell you, you know, I didn't understand this part, or, you know, I don't think that's how that went back in history, or something like that. And um, I did not have a critique group for Journey to Freedom, but I have for several of my other books, and it has been invaluable to me. Now, what would you do about getting it published? If you had a manuscript in the back, it's pretty easy to get published nowadays, right? But you'd go it through the critique, group, the critique group first, right? I would. Um, like I said, the, the opinions of the critique group are invaluable. And publishing, it has been made easier than going through a traditional publisher. There's still an option, of course, if a person wanted to. But through Amazon and Create Space and Barnes and Noble, they make it to where you can do your own as well. So it's easier now than ever to get your book published, right? It is very much so. Yeah, you know what though? I what I there's a flip side to this too, and what I found is that a lot of people publish before they're ready, and that's why that critique group comes into play, and it's very important, right? It is. Um, what I have found is that the editing and the critique group can advance your book faster than anything else that I've found. Um, I do have different internet tools that I use, but other people have different ones that they use to help them. Yeah, it sounds good. Um, what are some of those tools? I use uh, Pro Writing Aid which is a internet tool and because I am um, more conscientious about passive voice than active voice and when I am writing sometimes I don't pick up on it while I'm writing and this computer program does that for me and I can go back and correct those. Now I didn't use that on Journey to Freedom but I have used it on my other book and that's why there's a second edition of Journey to Freedom coming out. Um, the other one I use is um, Scribblefile. That's where I get a lot of my feedback for my writing. It's a critique group. And I'm not being paid to endorse these companies. It's just what I've used. And there's also a, a computer program that I enjoy using, and it's called Scrivener. And you're able to post your chapters in there and break it down and be able to combine them. And... It, it really makes it easier to flow within a chapter to be able to do that. For example, if you're at the last part of the book and you needed to remember a detail, you could go to another chapter and look at that detail, or they have character sketches on that program, and you can go to their character sketch and make sure that the details that you have for that character is uh, consistent throughout the story. Those sound like tremendous programs. Now, I do freelance stuff for sports, and I use a program called Style Writer 4.0, and I'm not paid to endorse it either, but uh, that, that's pretty good. If you're a blogger or you're doing freelance stuff, that's a tremendous tool because it helps you uh, stay away from the long sentences, helps you to keep your uh, words more concise because, you know, when you're writing on the web, you're writing for a worldwide audience who may not speak English as well as you do. So that's a good tool. Those are all good tools, too, Katrina. Now, uh, this book, again, Journey to Freedom, is set during the Civil War period. Why a book during that period? What fascinates you most about the Civil War period? I am a um, person who roots for the underdog given any situation. And so when I started thinking about an error to write in that I enjoyed, I thought about the Civil War because there is a lot of controversy that goes on throughout the Civil War. And I did choose slavery as the main theme for the book. And uh, I actually had someone point out to me that slavery was not the main intention of the Civil War. I understand that. But 
it was a byproduct of it. And um, so what I wanted to do was I wanted to take a different stance. This is not per se about the Civil War, but about the people inside of this era and how they survived and what they struggled with and what were their dreams and what did they want to what were they going to sacrifice to get to it? Because we all sacrifice something for our dream. And their dream was to have freedom. And their dream was to get to the north to have freedom and to be free and to live a life where when they toiled land, it would be there. It wouldn't be for somebody else. And this book actually starts prior to the Civil War. And it goes through quite a bit of traveling before we actually get into the Civil War part of this book. Yeah, there's a lot of components in there. And you're right, the Civil War wasn't just about slavery, but that was a big issue. You know, that, that was kind of the precursor to it all. Or I should say that was the gasoline that was already on the fire. That's right. That's but, right. But the, the, the thing is, is this. As you bring out a lot of things in this book, and it's an amazing read, and I, I suggest you get Journey to Freedom. If you're a Civil War buff, an American history buff, you're going to enjoy this book. Now, this is historical fiction, and that means it's set in actual history, but with fictional characters that probably describe some real circumstances that could or could not have happened, right? That's correct. Okay, now it's also been described, some reviewers I read have labeled Journey to Freedom as Christian fiction. Would that also be a fair assessment? Um, I think it would be. You know, um, I've had readers who are not Christian who have contacted me and said, you know, the Christianity in it towards the end of the book took me by surprise. I wasn't expecting it, but they still rated my review uh, or my book as a four or a five star review. And they said, even though that they were not religious or a Christian, that they still enjoyed the dynamics of the book from beginning to end. And I'm paraphrasing because, of course, I don't have all the reviews in front of me. But, you know, um, I found that interesting because at the end of the book, well, the last third of the book, it does get into Christianity, but that's what our country was founded on and the the basic principles. And at one point, the characters end up in prison. And for research on that portion of it, I actually read a book written by Corey Tenzoon, The Hiding Place, and it's a very popular book. And it gave me to some insight on what it was like to be a Christian inside of a prison back in, you know, of course, hers was a different war, but, you know, it, it was still gave me a mindset to be able to uh, pattern this one over. That's fair enough. So so we can call it a Christ, Christian historical fiction. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Now, uh, in this book, Two issues that you do deal with are slavery and then interracial relationships. Now, slave, both of these are, or at that time, interracial relationships were completely taboo. In fact, when I was growing up, they still weren't that accepted. And that was in the early 70s. Why a book about interracial relationships in the 1860s? I wanted to bring out something unique about the that era that wasn't talked about a whole lot. And I don't believe that the relationships were publicly acknowledged or flaunted, but I do believe that they happened. And in this book, we do have interracial between uh, Gregory's parents. Uh, the, his father is a chief Indian and the woman was a black woman. And they were together and produced a son who is Gregory. And inside him, he has two heritages that he is internally struggling with, you know, to to come to terms with. 
And even though it may not be talked about a lot for that error, I do believe it happened. Well, they, they were very prominent. But the difference is they were back room type deals mostly. Exactly. You know, white, rich slave owners would rape the women <laughs> and have yes. relationships with their maids. Thomas Jefferson being one of them. Right. Thomas and one Jefferson. of my yes, and one of my characters, um, it's a a by character, it's not a main character. Um, her story comes out like that. However, you know, she the rich owner you know, it was a white male, she was a white female, and he took a fancy to her, you know, took care of her, gave her everything she would want. She he was luxurious, but it was a back door. It wasn't out in public. And that was addressed as well. See, there's nothing new under the sun. It's there keeping folks back then just like they do today. Yep. Yep. Unbelievable. Well, it's not actually, but still in all, it's a difficult topic. And then the issue of slavery... It's also very predominant in this book. Now, what did you? What was the one thing that you learned about slavery during your research that you didn't maybe didn't understand before? I knew about slavery, but until I really dug into the issue, I don't think I realized how bad it really is. You know, I can't pinpoint it down to one particular thing. But I did a lot of research on reading different stories, and you have your bare minimum where the the plantation owners, the slave owners, would take care of them and treated them well, and then you have the very opposite extreme. And uh, I don't want to go into any descriptiveness, but it is just to read those accounts really broke my heart, you know, for what what humans do to one another, you know, um, it, it just really broke my heart about that. Yeah, there were, uh, for every one good guy, there were nine bad guys. Yeah. And that was a horrible time for America. And, and luckily for me, my family didn't come to America until the early 20th century. So, geez, I don't know. But anyhow, how common were these type of relationships, interracial relationships during that period, during your research, how common was it really? I came across it quite a bit in some internet researching that I did and uh, some backdrop. <clears throat> I mean, it's hard to put a percentage, you know, because a lot of it wasn't um, broadcasted like we've talked about. Yeah, it was very common. Actually, and it, it, it is what it is, and it, it's good to see that this was highlighted the way you did in this book. And, and the book is called Journey to Freedom. You can find a link to that in the show notes where you can purchase it on Amazon.com in either Kindle or paperback, right? That's correct. Okay. Now, Marissa. Who is Marissa, and how did she come to be? Marissa is a young lady who had to struggle at, well, she and her mother had to struggle when she was younger. And after her mother passed away and her father had passed away when she was young, she pretty much had to make her own way. And she took the courage to leave and make her trail towards the north so where she could be free as well. She, she wasn't, she was a young lady with very light black skin so she could actually transpose herself as a white woman when she needed to to be able for her safety for making her to get where she wanted to go and um, her mother would try to teach her what she could of English to make her where she had the ability to talk better as an educated woman Uh, that's right. And, and now Gregory, he you've already described him as half Indian, half black, right? That's correct. So this is technically an interracial relationship, right? It is. Very yeah. much so. Absolutely. Now, how did Gregory come to be? Where did you find him? Um, 
And Gregory just came right out of my imagination after reading about the Indians' plight and the black plight during that time. And um, it, like I said, I wanted something that was unique and give him some internal struggle as well as external. And he has a boatload of it. And uh, he's a very strong male character. Yes, he is. He's very interesting. Now, there are two characters that I wanted to ask you about. Carmen and Charles. Now, did you pattern these characters after uh, historical figures from the Underground Railroad? Because that's what it seemed like to me. I did pattern them after somebody in the history. I want to say the Underground Railroad. Have you heard of Lydia Child? Mm-hmm. Okay, that is who they were patterned after. Lydia Child and her husband were for those who don't know, one of the first anti-slavery supporters. And she was actually a published author starting in 1833. And she wrote a book called An Appeal in Favor of That Class of Americans Called Africa. And so I have a portion in my book where Marissa and Eliza, who is another character in the book, are giving speeches to uh, people trying to get them to give up their idea of owning uh, slaves. I have actually had readers come back and say that doesn't seem authentic. However, based on um, maybe Lydia didn't go around having speeches like I took artists to write and put in my book, but there were people out there in that day and age who was already trying to support the abolishment of slavery prior to the Civil War. And Lydia Child and her husband was one of them. Yes, they were. Now, Marissa is basically, she's uh, she's African-American, right? Yes. Okay, now, when she was giving speeches, uh, did you find anyone else in your uh, research that was similar to her, that, were, that went to the North and uh, were put up by rich folks? And we're giving speeches in the towns? Uh, not in my research. Like I said, I took kind of artist liberties in doing that. So um, I didn't come across anyone per se. Perfect. Anyway, so here's what we'll do. What we could talk about is this. Journey to Freedom was set against the Civil War and against the slavery movement, the Civil War mainly, during that era. What about that era fascinates you so much? Because you seem to want to write about it. You've written two books basically in and around that era. What do you find so fascinating about it? I find fascinating is the strength of people back then. The time that they, the things that they had to face during their lifetime is something that I don't believe this generation can grasp. Because it is such, it's almost like a different world now than what it was back then. And I like visiting back then and taking it in and understanding. And it's not all good. There's a lot of bad, but there's, there's that mixture of it, of adventure, of controversy, of survival, of love. You know, it's, um, communities coming together. And you don't see, well, you don't see as often communities coming together for one another. And so uh, it's just an era that I really enjoy reading about and, of course, writing about. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Now, what three things do you want the listener to know about Journey to Freedom and The Journey Begins? Well, I'm excited to state that I am going to be doing Journey to Freedom and Their Journey Begins as an audio production in the near future. I don't have um, a set date on that yet, but it will be coming available soon. And um, right now you can purchase both Journey to Freedom and Their Journey Begins through Amazon. And soon it will be available through Barnes & Nobles as well. And uh, let's see. Journey to Freedom is my very first novel, and um, like I said, a second edition is going to be coming out to fix some of the um, errors that I have found in it. 
So. Terrific. Terrific. And where can we find you? What your, what's your website? My website is www.authorkaynetter.com. And the Twitter? It's at Author K. Netter. Tremendous. Thank you so much for being on the program with me, Katrina. Wish you all the best with what you're up to. Well, thank you, Phil. I've really enjoyed it. Uh, me too. Uh, you, again, you can find Katrina at AuthorKMetter.com or on Twitter at AuthorKMetter. Journey to Freedom is an interesting read. Definitely, you want to pick it up if you can. There will be a link to that book in the show notes. And I hope that you do. Historical fiction is what it is. And this book will keep you interested. And you know what? Whether you agree with some of it or not, it's a great read. It's one that you won't forget. Trust me. And that's going to wrap it up for this edition of the Writer Showcase Podcast. Again, if you would like to be a guest on the show or would like to support the work being done here, you can contact me at www.thewritershow.wordpress.com and I'll get you going. Until next time, enjoy the reading.